One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. There in front of him was a man suffering from abnormal swelling of his body. Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in law, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent, so taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him on his way. Then he asked them, if one of you has a child or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull it out? And they had nothing to say. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place. So when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This is from Luke chapter 14, and it's the Gospel that goes with our epistle text from yesterday in the old one-year lectionary. And it's actually the one-year lectionary uh, that comes out of the Book of Common Prayer. And I like it because in the one-year lectionary, at least, we, we pair up the epistle and the gospel reading to have it share some understandings. And so like yesterday when we were talking about humility being something that we don't do, it's something that happens upon us, right? Um, we see here that Christ is trying to say, be humiliated. You know, for instance, in the second half where he's, he's looking at um, the guests taking the best seats, and then they're going to be humiliated and taken to the lower seats. And in part because they want to be important. They want self-importance. They want the, the, the slap on the back. They want the handshakes. They want the people looking at him and going, oh, I wonder who that is. Who's that sitting next to the king? Oh, he must be an important person, right? Instead, he's saying, no, you take the low seat. You sit on the floor in the back. And then let the the one who has invited you say, oh, no, 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 no. No, I, I've got your name tag up here at this at this seat, at this chair. Because it's it's not humiliating to just pick a seat and, and sit in, especially if it's the lower seat. It is humiliating to think of us more than we ought to and then have the world humiliate us in a way, right? There's nothing more humbling than to lose, in whatever case that may be. To think of yourself uh, as, as a fantastic athlete, for instance, and then you lose to somebody that you shouldn't. Like this, this week, the, the women's national soccer team lost to Sweden. Well, Sweden's not pushovers. They're, they're a good team. They've always been, I believe, in the top four in the world when it comes to, to women's soccer. So it's not like they lost to the little sisters of the poor. Right? But the U.S. has brought in this record of not losing for ever, for like a long time. And it was a humbling thing where you hear one of the captains say, well, now we know what we need to do. And you want to sit there first and say, well, you didn't know what you needed to do before. But at the same time, they now realize they're not invincible. They're not God. They're not the most important thing in the world. And so now they understand we can lose any game. So we need to play. This is the Olympics. These are the best athletes. Understanding that humiliation comes to us so that we might better understand who we are, but we might also better understand who Christ is and what he's going to do in us, right? And so it closes with this verse in verse 11, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Why? Because when we puff ourselves up and we make more of ourselves, suddenly someone is going to find time to come and knock us down. And it's going to happen. It's inevitable. Pride always catches us. Uh, criminals more often get caught because of stupid little things like broken headlights, missing tabs, uh, uh, you know, speeding, um, too much tint on their windows, too many things hanging from their, their rear view mirror, whatever the case may be, in part because when we're a criminal and we keep getting away with things, pride starts to build up in us and we think that we're, in, we're invincible. And then we get caught by one little mistake, right? And it's the same thing for us. Christ calling to us to humble ourselves in part because he humbles himself and he's going to humble us. 
Our sin is going to humble us. But then we have a Christ, a Savior, one to save us from our sins, to raise us up. Well, looking at the first half of the story, though, I love this because he gets invited to a Pharisee's house, so a prominent religious leader. And you, and you think in some ways he's been set up because they brought in a guy who has dropsy, who has, who has edema, who's, who's just swollen from all this fluid. And he basically looks around and goes, it's the Sabbath. The Sabbath is supposed to be a day of rest, guys, right? Well, why don't I give this guy some rest from his disease? And no one says anything, and so he heals him. And then he just sits here and goes, wouldn't you save your son? Wouldn't you save an ox? Isn't this guy more important than an ox? Right? This, this humbling comes to us also to keep us from looking at our religion, looking at our ritual, and allowing it to take precedence over mercy. That, that when Christ tells us, uh, go and learn what this means, I desire mercy over sacrifice. Mercy becomes a humbling thing because often, more often than not, it calls to us to hand to someone that which they do not deserve, which is a humbling thing for us, to hand over mercy and goodness in that way, to inconvenience ourselves in that way. And we pray that that comes to us, not because we're supposed to be getting on board and doing this thing, but because as Christ comes into us, invades us, and we continue to grow in insight and knowledge it, that, that our love abounds more and more, as, as Paul says in Philippians 1. It starts to transform us from the inside out, and instead of looking for ways that we might do more things for God, it just comes to us naturally that we hand out mercy, even when we don't think someone deserves it. And that's the prayer that we have. Well, let us pray this prayer that is this humbling prayer. To, to only give us the things that are profitable and put away from us all things that are hurtful. O God, whose never failing providence ordereth all things both in heaven and earth, we humbly beseech thee to put away from us all hurtful things and to give us those things which be profitable for us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, church, have a great weekend. We'll see you on Sunday. Go in peace, serve the Lord.